Hello and welcome to all you Scorpios. Here is your yearly horoscope. I will try to do the yearlies as best as I can with all these planets and all these transits that are going on. But let's have a look at, you know, specifically for you Scorpios uh, and in general, of course, where the energies are flowing and where they're not flowing so gently. But most of all, in general, for all the signs, it seems to be a less challenging year. In 2017 less insecure year so um, and let's have a look at some uh, planets now the first good news I want to start with the good news is on the 11th of October I know it's a bit at the end of the year Jupiter is in Scorpio Jupiter enters Scorpio on the 11th of October which is fantastic it happens only once every 12 years so there is a spa expansion going on for you Scorpios and uh, a building up you could say growing uh, and you for understanding yourself uh, and, and finding yourself and knowing that you are important in this world uh, but not only that maybe a lot of you will try to travel uh, um, try to travel a bit more or start teaching or at least learning uh, learning new things so that's for the end of the year but before that, Jupiter is still in your 12th house in Libra. And that is about, it's quite, um, I find that quite a spiritual position. Um, this Jupiter there in your um, in your 12th house. And it's um, related to your health as well, especially around March and September time. Because it, it's going to oppose Uranus. It's going to square up to Pluto as well in your third house. So what is all this that means is, especially around March, August, September, there is like, um, it could be health. It could be uh, an improving of your health mentally and physically because you are skipping, you are... Um, you are saying goodbye to old attitudes, basically. That's Jupiter in your 12th. Having the opportunity to see your blind spots. I talked about that probably in December, the, the monthlies in December of 2016 already. But this is how it works at its best. It's really about pointing out some... Uh, and, and Scorpio, just like any other sign, can be self-destructive. Scorpios can really be self-destructive and knowing it. Um, so that's quite painful. But now with the Jupiter in the 12th, it's almost like having a, um, a blessing there. Uh, of, of, um, and opposing to Uranus, it means that through doing alternative uh, medicine, doing uh, yoga, doing uh, meditation, doing, I don't know, acupuncture, all these kind of things you get rid of these old, old-fashioned, not good working patterns of yours. So that's a bit of a theme in this, uh, in this year. Um, because Venus, and, and so it could be, have to do with health. On another level, it could have to do with work. Because the sixth house is also your work, is also your day-to-day -day routine. And uh, Uranus is there. So for you Scorpios, it's you're at your best when you're doing work that is a bit not mainstream, is a bit unusual, is a bit you having to go against the stream. But you Scorpios, you do that. You can do that uh, courageously. And um, Venus is going retrograde in that sixth house as well. This is so significant. So there is not a Mars retrograde. I'm not going to talk about the Mercury retrogrades here because they're not that important for you, except maybe in April for the retrograde in in, uh, in your opposite sign of Taurus, so which is which marks relationships. So that could be a time where you um, where is it is a bit of a reality check there. You kind of uh, adjust your perception. Uh, about someone that is dear to you for better or for worse you know it's not always the way that oh all of a sudden you see someone is worse than you thought it could also be the other way around and especially with Scorpios because Scorpios are so protective that sometimes they only see um, uh, 
uh, the things that are not so great about someone. So maybe this could change around April time and saying, hey, this person is not so bad after all. Could happen. Now, but very significantly, Venus is going um, retrograde in your sixth house in Aries. Um, and that happens around March up until June time. So what does it mean? Venus going retrograde for such a long time there in that sixth house of work of um, and of health. It could be it could mean both as well. Let's start with work here now. Um, it could mean that you fall in love with work. That could, it could be the case as well with Venus there in the sixth house and that causes a bit of stress there and a bit of pondering and what should I do or whatever. But it, it will work out. It, it can it, it surely has to work out, but um, for better or for worse, you don't know that, of course, in these general horoscopes. But the thing is that you could meet someone or a colleague, be, become a bit more significant with Venus in your sixth house, or it could mean that you return to an old love when it comes to work. So let's say 10 years ago, you did something and now you pick that up again and you like it and you love it, but you, you change it, of course, it's, it's not the same thing. Um, but, um, there is a bit of an adjustment there. Your value against work might change. So what you used to like may just change into something that you don't like to do anymore or vice versa. Something that you didn't like to do might, you might like it now. So it's a, it's a good time to think about, uh, changing jobs as well. And um, and then when Venus goes retro, uh, goes direct again to um, to to do it to change the job so first thinking about it and then doing it around June time for instance also health so health is also important so it could be something that has to do with your health that needs to be revisited that needs to be reviewed maybe you new and that has to do with that axis on the sixth and the twelfth house with Jupiter there in your twelfth. So maybe something that you're, maybe a diet that you used to take uh, or that you used to apply that you are going to implement again. Uh, or maybe there is a, a kind of a, an illness that comes back again that you used to have many years ago and now you're handling it differently. Um, all these things. So. Um, what else is happening? Yes, Pluto stays in, in, in uh, Capricorn. So for you, it's your Pluto is in Capricorn. It's an earth sign. It's not bad at all for you. So you do stay very uh, powerful in your speech uh, during the month of, um, during the year of 2017, because Pluto will be for the whole year there in uh, your third house of speech and of communication. So you will still go very deep to the root of the matter, to understand what's going on, to understand your environment, to understand what's going on around you. So that will stay as uh, last year. But now it's like it's going quicklier, even quicklier than already, because Pluto squares up to Jupiter uh, in uh, Jupiter in that 12th house. So there is like also the environment is helping you to transform you in a way. Uh, what you see on a, on a day to day level, which is a third house, kind of has an impact on you to first of all change those patterns that you had that didn't work for you anymore, but also to be um, very real as well in um, and uh, and realistic also with siblings. There could be an opening up there with Jupiter square Pluto, you know, if there have been some problems there. There could be a transformation going on, uh, but or, or some um, things that uh, were hidden or it, whenever there was manipulation between siblings, they trying to manipulate you or you trying to manipulate them. There's like an opening up and a stopping of that uh, with the square to Jupiter, uh, especially around end of March and August time. So that's nice as well. Or with neighbors. Uh, or with, you know, people from your environment, the neighborhood that you live in, that, that could come up uh, some information there, uh, especially in January as well, because there you have the Mercury going retrograde in Capricorn in that house as well. 
So that's that. And last but not least, the eclipses. Now the eclipses is important for you because it's in key areas of your life. There's going to be eclipses in February and August and it's uh, the 10th house and the 4th house, which is home and work. So if you're fed up with work or if you're fed up with your home situation, there could be drastic changes happening there around February or August time because eclipses seem to work that way. If you are hanging on to a situation that is no longer suiting you, it's like the universe decides, come on, it's five before 12. So um, all in all, uh, a, a nice year to look forward to, especially as I said with Jupiter in your sign at the end of the year, but um, I forgot to mention Saturn in a trine to Uranus, of course. So Saturn is in your second house and Uranus in your sixth. So again, when it comes to work, um, these are the, the work houses and there's beautiful energy between Saturn in the second house is not so nice, especially for your uh, money uh, situation, because it can be very hard um, and uh, a bit of a boomerang effect if uh, you haven't ta taken care well of your finances with Saturn there especially last year but this year Saturn trines with Uranus so it seems that if last year was a difficult year for you you can gain a bit more money out of the, the work that you do but maybe a bit with um, uh, ups and downs so ir irregularities so to speak but uh, there is that more, more money coming in because of work uh, more, change, uh, more uh, value coming in because this beautiful Saturn Uranus trine happening the whole year, but especially in May and uh, in November. So, um, if you, in other way, in other words, it's still stay economical. You know, for all you Scorpio Saturn in the second house, it's for the whole year. It's only shifting to your third house on the twenty-first of December. So this is uh, be econ economical, be realistic, uh, do your administration well with Saturn in your second, even if you don't like to do that. But trining with Uranus means that, yeah, you can get some innovative ideas about your administration, your day-to-day -day life and your work. Having said that, I thank you very much for watching. I wish you a very good year. So as I said, there's a bit of a reality check there with relationships um, around April time. Um, there is possibility to uh, improve your work and to gain more money because of it and um, expansion when it comes to you uh, around the end of the year, around October time. Having said that, have a, have a good year. Bye-bye.